start on this computer. Holy shit, we did it. Okay, here's what I have to get down. Yay, technology. Yes. I am I am the worst, man. I've got like computers galore. I sound like I'm about to break into song, which is super appropriate um, <laughs> for this. Okay, so who's in the Phillies hat? Or what is that? Uh, oh. I don't know who. So who's Jim, who's Liam, and who's Brandon? I'm Jim. You're, I knew it. You're Liam. Jim, Brandon, Liam. Damn it, I got it wrong. Okay. I've <laughs> called um, me Liam and Brandon before. Uh, oh, I don't know. Oh, have I don't you think got, me and Jim are related. Yeah, though. I think we're brothers, which is hilarious. <laughs> Do, are, are, none of you guys are related. We're just getting straight nah. into it. Nah. Um, <laughs> how? I, I have a tendency to do this. Um, I did a podcast with Pete Holmes, and I said, how? He goes, the hell? <laughs> I was like, that's, yeah, you could get into there. Where, where did you guys meet? How did, how did this happen? Okay, I, 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 I probably should give people some context, because I think we're just going to drop straight into this. My, I, I am, thankfully, you guys are sat in front of me and I in front of you squarely because... I, it's not uncommon for me to walk out of this room and either into our bedroom or into my wife's office, and she's she has her phone six inches from her face, like <laughs> you know a TikTok whatever, and she's just crying. And I was like, I need to know immediately. I was like, what's going on? And she just couldn't. She just kept you know do, doing the wave off, you know, one of these. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I, I want to, uh, hopefully you guys can hear this because it's, it's going to be in the, the um, what do you call it, the audio. Um, but it was, where I got to pull this up. I had this already. She's imperfect, but she tries. <laughs> she is good, but she lies. She is hard on herself. She is broken, but no one will ask for help. She is messy, but she's kind. Get it. She is so weird. Most of the time, <laughs> she is all of this mixed up and baked in beautiful. <laughs> Come on, come on. And this reaction right here. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was it. I wait. You guys couldn't hear that at all. No. Oh no. my was, god. I'm crying. That was the that funniest was so thing I've ever funny seen. To watch oh it. my god. <laughs> I. I for some there, there's a friend of mine pointed out to me, and I think I maybe got it from him. But I do this thing where it's like. It's there was a, there was a band leader. I, I, I grew up in Dallas, and we used to go to Dallas Jazz Orchestra on Sundays, primarily because we knew somebody there, and we could get in and eat for free, because it was part of Dallas Country Club, super snooty, highfalutin. <laughs> but every Sunday was the, uh, or maybe it was like the every third Sunday, some random thing. But it was like it was like on Sunday night they would do this buffet at the country club, and then it was the Dallas Jazz Orchestra's open rehearsal. So you could go in and hear like this 20 to 30 piece jazz band wow. just getting it. Food and the orchestra. <laughs> I'm, yeah, food and the orchestra, the food was whatever. But their, <laughs> their band leader um, played horn, and we would always put up, we'd say like chart 57, chart 57, chart 57. And if we bought him enough whiskeys, he would do chart 57, which was MacArthur's Park. And he would just belt on that, that trumpet, man. And just every time I was just in a, in a heap of tears. And just the level of musicianship that they had, 
I fell in love. I mean, I, it was a whole new falling in love with music, and I've grown up loving music. But he would do this thing whenever the band was just really getting it. And it was like he almost wanted to do like metal, but it was just kind of like jazz. <laughs> and I noticed that I still do that. But there's the, the my my wife is just is she's throwing me this phone, and she's a, such a huge Sarah Bareilles fan, and she uh, she was just crying. And I thought she was going to show me. I and I thought because I heard a little bit of it, I was like, "That's a weird, like, is that Sarah singing? Like, who is that?" And then I saw this, and I get angry. And I only get <laughs> angry when I am faced with a level of um, exemplary talent that both inspires me to do better and just tells me to sit down and never try. <laughs> <laughs> And oh, it was just, you. I mean, and then I just went down the rabbit hole and, and, and she had already gone down the rabbit hole. It's like, why are you still looking as normally? It's like 930. My wife is out. And she had just gone down this rabbit hole of watching. And then there was the other one. Uh, if you guys have never heard that song before, it's, it's uh, Sarah Bareilles originated it on, on, on Broadway. Uh, and my wife actually went and saw her. I think they were in previews, but maybe they were actually on, uh, at least she saw it again on Broadway um, to go see Waitress. Um, which is just an, an incredible, and, and I, you guys probably know this, I don't know, wait, why did you just point to Jim? Because Jim was on the tour. Oh, I toured with Waitress for like 16 months. Yeah, I was in the first national tour. Mm -hmm. I love how he just said, oh yeah, by the way, I, I just did this incredibly amazing <laughs> thing. That's no big deal, whatever. Like, uh, um, yeah. wh wh who, who is it that's doing it now? Or who, who took a, because um, there's someone who started in the role, and forgive me, I, I don't remember her name, and Jesse then, Mueller, right? who was started. it? Yeah, Jesse Mueller started. Jesse Mueller, right. So, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. and then Sarah came in and did a limited run. Exactly. And, and then, and it's different because Jesse has this. If you've ever stepped foot on Broadway, you're like, that's why she's on Broadway. Right. Like the level of talent that she has. But Unreal. what's so interesting to me, and I'm, I'm, I, I promise you that I'm gonna, I want to find out more from you guys because I feel like I've, I've, I've talked a lot, but I, I want everyone listening or watching to understand why, besides just the fact that you guys are incredibly good singers, why you guys are here, um, there is a... The second that Sarah sings, it, there's a difference between someone who can sing those notes with a, a level of skill and talent and then the person you go, but you wrote that song. And it, it comes from a place that is incomparable. But not since that have I heard an interpret, and I got chills. I mean, I've listened to that thing, I don't know how many times. Uh, and then there's Defying Gravity, which just, Brendan, I don't understand you. I don't under, you're not, it's not fair. I know. Um, the voice of a little angel. <laughs> I mean, but it's not though. You know what I mean? Like a little angel. Yeah, it's like a badass angel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, and by the way, I have like this huge sword that could just <laughs> eviscerate demons. But, oh, but I, I... Coming from you, Matt. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> that, that hey, sword look. comment, really. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I, 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 I checked up on you guys um, because I, I noticed this, this thing happened like a year ago. There's a couple of videos. Ten months ago, there's a couple of videos. And then about nine months ago, bam, 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 bam. There's almost 50 videos you guys have uploaded. And it, I don't think it's any coincidence of what's been going on for the last, you know, eight to nine months. So I want to know where this came from. But then I want to know also, like, why this? Of anything that you could, besides the fact that you guys are incredible singers, why did you choose to do this? And was this your response to COVID, to quarantine, to everything that's happening? And if so, why? Wow. Great questions. Wow. Great questions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think, well, so So the fastest way to say it is no, it was not like a, a response to COVID. Brendan, to go to your first question, is the reason T3 exists. Uh, we were all separately members of a summer professional acapella group that, that's located on Cape Cod called the Hyannis Sound. Uh, each summer it exists 26 years now. Each in the group in different summers. Liam and I went to college together. We sang acapella together at college, but we never sung together in that group. 
Brendan knew that we were all New York City based. <laughs> and then he sent us a Facebook message and was like, we should get together and sing. Because uh, on top of the fact that we um, knew that we had spent time in the same group, knew that we lived in New York City, we're also theater people, right? So like like we were saying before, I, I was in the Waitress Tour, and these guys are theater people in their like own amazing rights as well. So it was kind of having those connections, I think, that Brendan was like, let's come and put something together. And that was Into the Unknown, our very first video. Oh, my God. In, uh, late January. Uh, and then we just kind of kept doing it once a week, but... I think that COVID, I think us staying with it through COVID even to now is kind of what has made us a group, if that makes sense. We yeah. had to learn how to sing apart from each other. We need, had to learn how to uh, record, edit, and mix a song. I mean, we're still learning, <laughs> but uh, it's all, that, all that kind of stuff. Um, so honestly, like that's, I think that's like what made us. How, you know, how did, I mean, so you guys all grew up um in it, did you grow up in new york or, or or how did you all come to know each other like you said you you, you did some you, you were in the same groups and stuff together but have you were you have you always been in new york so i per, i personally grew up in brooklyn new york so i've right. been here my whole life but uh these two are both philly dudes they're both from philly yeah we're both well outside philly suburb yeah Suburbia, I, Philadelphia. we are both we were both part of the same school district and lived about like a half hour 45 minutes from each other growing up and just never met each other never met. Crazy. and then when we got to college uh i originally went to college for animal science <laughs> and what? then when i switched <laughs> when i switched to theater i started hanging out with jim <laughs> Then, Brandon and Hyena Sound was there. Yeah. Where did so the love of theater come from? Like, where, what, what's, and did that hit you all differently, or was it all like, what did one pull you more into it? Or have you all just kind of been in this place? I don't know, man. I mean, I think everybody has their own answer, but I, I got into it in high school, really, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, my mom had me singing in church choirs since I was like eight. So I was like always like singing. I always kind of had that foot into the thing. But then when I realized like what theater was, there was just something special about it. And so I got obsessed and then I found out you could go to college for it and, and then went to college for it. And the rest is kind of history. I moved to New York uh, pretty much right after I graduated. Um, I guess that was January of 14. Uh, and I've been here on and off ever since. What yeah. if you go ahead, Brendan? You were gonna say something. Well, I was just gonna say uh, I, I feel like it was slightly similar, similar, to, yeah, similar to Jim. Slimmer, slimmer. Like uh, slim. I, I, slim we're <laughs> I started. Uh, I started rock and roll. That was my kind of my first uh, my first introduction to music was through like the Beatles and Rolling Stones and different rock bands. And so I started singing in this program called the School of Rock which is ironic because he ended up touring with the School of Rock, <laughs> the musical. Sure. But I did this after-school program called the School of Rock, and I, I started playing bass guitar, actually, before I sang. Uh, and so I started doing that, and then I kind of learned to sing rock and roll. And then from there, <laughs> I discovered uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, which is, like, my favorite musical ever. The album, not the musical. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> really? Wait, wait, wait. So your love is the album, not the musical? It started with the album, and okay. then it became the musical. Okay. Um, but so ever since then, I've kind of just been like, you know what? I think I, I always wanted to be like a rock and roll singer, star thing, person. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> musical, musical theater kind of led to uh, led to acapella, which led to T3, which I feel like is rock and roll, right, Yeah, guys? definitely. <laughs> Do you guys are the punk version of acapella? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Okay, and then... And then there was one. Oh yeah, I, Liam. I mean, mine's kind of weird. I, I, similar to to Jim, I did like chorus and and choirs and stuff growing up. I was in uh in in a pop punk band, and that was like my thing. I love it. Tell I still name. I still love it. We were called Chasing Capulet. Chasing Capulet. Yeah. Of course you were. It was dope. I love it. <laughs> uh, and I like did theater in school just because like I, I went to Catholic school and we didn't really have like a music program. Uh, so the, there, were, the, there were only a couple performing things you could do and the musical was one of them. 
and I liked doing it and I loved it. But then like when I was looking at colleges, I was, I wanted to work with animals and like work in a zoo and conservation behavior. And so I went, ended up going to Penn State for that. And then when I was there, I just like started hanging out with the theater people. And I was like, wait, wait, on. wait, <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> I still love animals. Ideally, I'll have my own nature show one day. <laughs> like like Steve. Steve Irwin. Ah, go. What? You, so the, there's something that I noticed in, in the videos that you guys put up kind of in the very beginning, and, and then it kind of progressed, and then there was this big switch where you all look like you were desperate, and you were in different places, and then all of a sudden <laughs> you're together. New York specific, and you guys are in the city, right? So like, mm -hmm. you guys, yep. that that was, um, I don't use this term uh, flippantly, but I mean, uh, New York was was hit hardest, um, especially at first uh, with, with COVID. And the thing that I love about New Yorkers, uh, and the, the stark contrast between anybody that lives in Los Angeles, Los Angeles, the general sense of, of uh, the, the vibe here is, we belong here and New York is you have to fight to be there. Everybody that's in New York is fighting to be there. That's and <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's, yeah. it's a city that is steeped in history and also in adversity. Um, so the difference between LA, you know, was like, what do you mean? I can't go to my gym. And in New York, it was like, fuck it. We went, we lived past 9 11. We'll yeah. get through this. What do we got to do? We'll duct tape, but you know, in the living room. Every, yeah, what it didn't matter. It's like, and by and large, people in LA um, or vastly anywhere else in the country have a, a much larger place. If someone says, you have to stay inside there, they're like, all right, I've got a pretty big house. New York is like, I can go like this and touch both walls of my apartment. So, <laughs> All of a sudden, though, I see you guys are being together. So, so how did that come to be? Did you guys pod together? Was there like, was it a conversation? What did it look like to go from being quarantined and separate to all of a sudden we have to be together? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, at the beginning yeah. was was like because you, like New York obviously was hit super hard. So like, I live in Queens. Brandon lives in Brooklyn, and Jim lives uptown. So like at the beginning, <laughs> we were just like, we're not, it's, like it's only a couple miles, but it's like an hour on the train to either. Yeah. Like, that, that's like in LA that yeah. destroys friendships. So it's like, Hey man, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to move to Brentwood. You're like, ah, it's 15 minutes on the 405. I'm never going to see you again. You might know, as right? well be like, it's like going to pioneers going off for the gold rush. It's like, I'll uh, never literally. see you again. That's it's like Oregon that. trail shit. It's like, and he died of yeah. dysentery. Um, <laughs> yeah. So then how did you, then what, what changed it to where you guys were just like, we need to be here? Yeah, I mean, we shot our last video um, before quarantine at the end of February or maybe the first week of March. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we didn't see each other in person for until the end of July. Um, and then, but we still shot a video a week that whole time, just like <sighs> separately. Separately, yeah. Um, uh... Did you just like then, Rochambeau to, to see who's going to get on the number three and, and like, ah, oh, fuck, I don't want to have to go up, uptown. When you say uptown, <laughs> like, what do, you, what do you mean uptown? Are you talking, I don't, don't give me your address or anything, but like, I know we're, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with, with New York. So if you say, you know, Washington if, Heights. Oh, you're uptown. Yeah, I'm yeah, uptown. Yeah. He's yeah. up there. And then he's all the way down in Brooklyn, in Brooklyn. and then I'm in Astoria. <laughs> <laughs> Just like triangle. Yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you gotta hit all five boroughs and just like really, you know, let's let's, yeah. let's expand this group. I <laughs> I've been in New York before, and like I Anthony Rapp uh, is a buddy of mine, and uh -huh. I was like, hey man, he goes, hey, dude, when when are you coming to New York? I was like, I'm here. He goes, where are you? I'm like, oh, I'm like 57th and 5th. He's like, well, let me know when you come to New York. <laughs> and <laughs> it's like I'm not gonna. I I don't go above 23rd. Uh, as a lot of people, you know, it's like, that's, right. that's about as far as I go. And if I'm doing that, I'm like, ah, it's like lower East side, or especially if you're in Brooklyn, man, I had friends that were in, um, you know, either Brooklyn Heights or, or, uh, um, oh my God, what am I thinking? I'm, I'm, I'm missing all my cool names. Um, but it, <laughs> it is, it is no small feat. And, and that, that's why I'm kind of I'm harping on this. It's like, it's a big deal. The yeah. fact that you guys did that, that is overcoming a lot of odds. So I, I, I keep interrupting you, but I just want to make sure people understand how difficult of a thing that is. 
Yeah, so... Uh, we got uh, lucky, because... Yeah, so we got really lucky. So, uh, I guess we were in quarantine for how many months before this happened? Like, I mean, it had been a lot, right? March to the Until end of July. July. That's yeah. a lot of time. So anyways, <laughs> my, my godmother has a house up in the Catskills, and she basically told me that she was not going to be there for the month of July and August. And so she said... If I wanted to, I could bring my two friends, Jim and Liam, up to quarantine in the Catskills. So, um, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Holy. So, uh, so you're right. Thus creates the pod. We all got tested and did our own two-week quarantines beforehand. And then, um, and then we uh, hung out in the Catskills for a while. Made a Had you music. ever spent time like that before? Or were you guys just like, no matter what, hell or high water, it, this could get weird, but let's... You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, no. like, yeah. There's some like, people that are know. like, we should go on a trip together. And by the end of it, like day three is like, we should never do this again. <laughs> or it's like, there's a body in that bathroom and we got to go right now. How, how did that go? Was that like, was it wrong? Like, we definitely, you never know. But like one of the, the best things about the group that we did in college, the Hyena Sound thing is like, a big part of that is you move into a house on Cape Cod with 10 dudes that oh, okay. you don't, don't know before. And so the way that that group works is almost just as much about like the people that you're living with as it is yeah. the music. So like all having been through that is like, we all kind of know how to navigate if there would be a weird situation at all, but like, Luckily, we just had a, an awesome it time. It was really I mean, fun. And yeah. we're all pretty chill, like, when it comes to, like, we're, we're like, yeah, like, we're gonna, we'll get it done. Like, we get stuff done on time, but we're not like, did you finish that? We yeah. have a drunk line. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're all pretty chill <laughs> about it. But, are you, yeah. where are you guys at now? So your your Catskills was like a, a like a month long retreat, or you just like nope, we're still up at the Catskills. Like, where are you? Oh there? no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So right now we're in my apartment in Washington Heights. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. What um, what drives you guys? Now, there's I have a few friends that um, uh, are were were doing Broadway shows and and um, that there, there's there's all sorts of things where it, I, I have people that I know that that work in the medical field and and the thing that I, I feel COVID was and I, I don't want to make this all about COVID but it is an interesting um, and I think you guys are a very interesting response to this too but there is something about how the creatives have responded to this thing. And, and I had my moment where I try to be, I fancy myself as stoic and I try to convince other people it's like, look, adversity is not our enemy. It's our teacher. It's our friend. It's, it's here to help guide us through. And adversity exists so that we can um, not expose our weakness, but reveal our strengths. And so I was like, I was telling people, I was like, look, you got to get out. This is the greatest time for you guys to create and find creative ways to connect with people. And people were like, okay, what about you? And I went, oh shit, I have to, I have to do that. Like I, I, <laughs> I had put that challenge for it. I was like, you got to share your art. And they're like, you share. And I'm like, oh, right. And so I, <laughs> um, I did this song. I, I, I sat at this piano and I, I wrote this song. And the cool thing is that I was able to send it out and in, in, in three weeks it circled the globe and and a hundred people participated in this and and i wish that i'd known you guys oh my god um because we had we'll like, we'll please please we had 77 singers and it was oh, wow. it was the most amazing experience because they took my idea and made it better and um it, it's it's something that is reflective to me of this time it's, it kind of became my own personal anthem for 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 this period um, because I, I mean, if, if you look historically, the Renaissance followed the plague and it's, it's incumbent upon us creatives to drag, even sometimes kicking and screaming the rest of the world and the non-creative types into the light. And I've seen that from you guys. And especially being in New York, you've seen, I, I've never seen Broadway go dark ever, ever, ever. Mm. And I've got friends that were um, on shows and, and, you know, the, the people who do theater don't necessarily, or people who don't know about theater, you don't make a lot of money and you work your ass off um, and you do it for the love of the gig. Um, and especially in like one of the most expensive cities in the entire world to, to do that. And so it got really, really scary for a lot of people that I know. But but I didn't know if that was one of the reasons why, because to me it, it almost felt like 
you can't kill Broadway. You can turn off the lights and you can close the doors, but you can't take Broadway out of New York. And it's almost like you guys were bursting through with that. So because a lot of the songs that you've done have been in, in so inspired, not, not just Waitress, but stuff from Dear Evan Hansen. Um, man, I'm getting emotional talking about this with you guys. <laughs> um, but what, what makes you guys choose? Like, who comes to someone with a song? Is it Jim, is it you? Or is it just kind of very, like, someone's walking you know, through the house or is like, hey, um, I really love the theme to Pocahontas. And they're like, oh, what? And you guys, like, decide to do that? Or what, what chooses, what causes you guys to choose the songs that you do? No, that really is it. Like, uh, <laughs> we're just like, oh, this would be dope. Like, this would be a cool song. Like, sweet. And then, then that's it. I mean, we, we kind of accidentally ran into this, like, um, rotation of like okay we did into the unknown that was a disney song and then we did defying gravity and that was a broadway song and then we did when the party's over and that was a pop song by billy eilish so we like sort of maybe started a cycle of like okay let's do a disney song again and then those people will enjoy that and then a broadway song so we kind of like use that as like a template but it's not cool. like set in stone um i would say right don't you think yeah, yeah no i think it really it comes down to whatever we uh whatever songs we love to sing. And that's usually what we choose. Yeah. Is there, I'm going to, I'm going to do this because I can, because <laughs> I want to, <laughs> is there, even if it's just a, a little bit, first of all, before I put a pin in that, going back to, 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 um, she used to be mine, which I have, have, um, I think I've shared that song with more. Uh, I, I grew up with an older sister, and I didn't realize I have a lot of relationships. Uh, most of my relationships growing up, uh, my my closest relationships were with girls. Um, like uh, Laura Bailey is, she's like a sister to me. She's like like we're we're, we're super close friends, um, and I didn't realize that was the case be, until I, someone pointed. Out, I was like, oh, of course you grew up with sisters. Of course you're gonna have friends that are girls. I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, but I've shared that song specifically with the, the, the women in my life because it just feels so resonant for, for women. It's like there's this, there's this um, powerhouse inside of you, and that can be in conflict with the person that you find yourself in the midst of this circumstance. But just don't, don't forget that there is a stronger, um, more powerful person that's, that you're waiting to step into. And it's just a beautiful song. You guys... Who, who, how do you come up with the arrangements? Because there's some funky ass notes that you guys hit that are just, you, you saw me do this and it's, it's, I don't understand. Are those, a friend of mine who played a lot of jazz would call them accidentals. And it's like, it's not supposed to, like, from a theory standpoint, you're not supposed to do that. But that's jazz. Brennan, that's rock and roll. <laughs> Rock and roll was what happens when we turn this thing up too loud, right? Yeah. Um, and if, I mean, especially speaking of the Beatles, they looked at what was happening within um, not only jazz, but especially like Chuck Berry and, and, and gospel and everything. They were like, this was what it was really about. And it was them kind of bastardizing and Britishizing that and, and turning that into rock and roll. And then we looked at that and went, oh my God, what if we do that? And so art inspires art. But yeah, where yeah. do you guys come up with is like, is it is it those accidental moments, or is it something that is even more de by design? I mean, my favorite part about our arranging process is it's fully collaborative. Like when we did our first ten videos, our first ten songs, our first ten covers were in person, and we got those done before quarantine. So what we would do is we would just hole up around a piano and just throw out ideas. We're like, okay, well, we know we're doing... Who plays, uh, by the way? That's that's a good thing. Like, who plays instruments? We all kind of do. Well, we all play multiple instruments. Of course um, you do. Are you, in a, are you a pianist, really? Not at all. Yeah. I play guitar and yeah. drums, but drums. I can't play piano. Yeah. So, like, Brendan and I <laughs> play piano. Brendan also plays bass. I play yeah. a little guitar. Um, so it's like, you know, we, we, can, we can take care of the harmonic stuff. But um, uh, someone would just be like, well, uh, we sang, like... The melody just kind of like true in that last phrase. What about this particular riff? What about this run? What about a bell chord here? Like, you know, just like whatever. And we're kind of just trying out things as they happen, keeping some, cutting others. Um, and that was the process for the first 10 mm -hmm. until quarantine. And then we kind of switched it over to 
a zoom call, a zoom call. It, like honestly sounds like a like a, a meeting um but we um we all hop on zoom and then i i have notation software like you know sheet music stuff so like i um will share my screen and then we can see the arrangement coming together on the page and then um play back to kind of like check if we like what's happening since we can't sing together over zoom so we kind of have those two different processes and that's how we like come back and forth between whether it's a quarantine style or like a or an in-person arrangement how do you marry that that where the art seems to melt away and then the 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 math of it starts stepping forward right because when you look at that's all that music really is it's it's there's eight notes in their respective sharps and flats and when you start playing the numbers then you get different sounds um, even if you look at an A is 440 hertz, like that, like that, it's just math. It's math and physics and science and how it affects our ears. So what I'm hearing you say is like the process of it is like, okay, well, let's, there's, there's an education and there's a level of skill that drives me to investigate something that's more creative. Does that ever become, I remember playing with a buddy of mine in a band and I was hearing this certain chord. I was like, it needs to go here. And he goes, you, you can't do that. <laughs> and I was like, well, I don't, I don't know what you mean because he went to school and he understood. He also could never listen to jazz and never listen to classical again because he was in a lab band and he was in the one o'clock lab band at UNT or North Texas University, which was famous for their jazz bands. Wow. And he, he was like, I, I can't, he played guitar and he was a phenom, but he was also encumbered by his knowledge so have you ever gotten to that situation where the knowledge that you have can actually become the ceiling that your creativity is hitting up against? And if so, what do you guys do to break out of that? Uh, I'd say I, I, Jim uh -oh. and, and Brendan are like very, very uh, educated in terms of music theory. Um, and, and you're the like pump pot guy that's just like, fuck it. <laughs> and yeah. So like, <laughs> they, some of they, that. they always, I, they, they're always searching to make the most creative or like different thing possible. Um, and then usually it's my job to be like, they'll be like, is that too weird? And I'll be like, yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe we should like keep the melody there. Cause people want to hear that. <laughs> But like, they, they're, they're have you ever like gone too far to where stuff. it becomes it's you, you start, it's like, it's no longer the same song. Well, see, that's what uh, I think is uh, like the best part about our stuff is you can always hear a melody, right? You can always right. like, you, you know, what's going on. You, you've heard the song before. We don't want to reinvent that wheel. It's the stuff around it that we can choose a reharmonization here or like a, you know, a nine chord instead of your traditional, like, uh, major triad so just like simple like interesting little like ear, ear candy things every <laughs> once in a while uh, maybe simple is the wrong word but you know what I mean. <laughs> no I, I i think what you guys are keying into is something that i my problem is that when i'm writing i have a tendency to um embellish too much and in that in in the pursuit of well what if we did this and then this and then this and then this yeah. Um, I, I, have a, I have a dear friend that's a great producer that I work with, and he always says, there's two things you need. If you want to, whenever I came to us, I was like, I wrote a song, and the drums go like this, and there's this horn section, and these strings come in, and there's this, like, this really cool synth line. And he goes like, when I hear you say I wrote a song, what I hear you say <laughs> is that you have a bunch of ideas. When you have the lyrics and the melody, let me know, because then you will have written a song. And that's true because like what you guys prove is, and this is what I love is, is whenever someone takes a song, I didn't want to like it, man, but that stupid watermelon sugar bullshit <laughs> Harry, I was like, damn it. His version, by the way, I do not like. And it wasn't until I heard you guys, I'm like, well, that just doesn't make, no, I don't want to like this. But when you can, when you can take a song and go, I'm going to present it to you this way. And whether it's a, a song is a great song, if it's being done by an 80 piece orchestra, if it's being done by a um, guitar around a campfire, if it's done by three voices, 
that are finding interesting ways to connect to each other. And that's that's what really drew me to you guys because it's not just so much about like oh these three guys can harmonize. What I saw in y'all was was a a passionate, earnest, diligent way for three humans to connect in a time where that is in uh, short supply. It feels like there's more people that are learning how to sever with um, a sever connections with, I mean, surgical skill. And you guys are going, I'm going to show you how you can connect to each other in, in incredibly unique ways. And the thing that I loved specifically about the She Used to Be Mine is the notes that you guys actually hit are dissonant. But what they do is they that you do it for just long enough to introduce you to the new thought that allows you to, propel, to be propelled into the next moment, which is the moment of harmony. And it's like, man, that stuff is just, I don't know, that, that, that just really speaks to me. Um, well, thanks, man, that, that really does mean the world. I mean, I, I, think, I think what's interesting, I, I, would, I would like to take that sentiment you just so eloquently gave us and, and try to hold on to it because cool. like I think about I think about she used to be mine in particular and our first we'll, we'll crunch moment our first dissonant moment is just hmm. a minor two chord on the word hard mm -hmm. like hard so if we can continue to relate um the lyrics to the idea like she yeah. is lonely I'm gonna do that by myself right, right. just like little little interesting things like that um that can kind of Keep the arrangement interesting while relating to the lyric. You know what I mean? I so think, yeah, I, I also think that for us, it really is, we've like done acapella groups and I think that's different from what we're trying to do. I think we're really trying to do like three people telling a specific like story rather than like a 10 person like boo bap bap bap. Like we're not trying to do that. <laughs> we're really trying to just have three singers tell a story as much as possible and make it not about acapella. If that makes sense. Which obviously we all did a cappella. Yeah. <laughs> not, yeah. Not to take anything away from that. Yeah. But you know. But it does it. I, I don't think it actually detracts or, or reduces the notion of that. I think what you, you've been able to do is, man, anytime someone, and maybe I just, I'm fortunate either that or, or it's, it's by design that I'm able to find people that constantly reaffirm the notion that I believe we are all storytellers, like genetically predisposed to be storytellers. It's the reason why we created language. And I had a great conversation. Uh, there's Professor Alice Roberts, who is one of the foremost leading uh, anthropologists in the world. And we had a conversation when she said, most people, uh, most anthropologists believe that we were singing before we spoke. Because talking is actually a far more reductive version of communication, whereas singing has so much subtlety and nuance, um, far more than, than just the spoken word. So especially whenever singers talk to me about being storytellers and how music is the telling of a story. And that's why this whole thing is called Relator. It's like a relator is a storyteller, but it's also the reason why we want to tell stories is because I want you to know what I've been through and I want to know what you've gone through. Um, because ultimately that is, by me sharing my story, you understand that if I, whatever adversity I went through, you may go through and I got through it. And whatever adversity you went through, you went through and I may go through. So give me your roadmap and I'm going to give you mine. Um, one of the things that I was surprised by when I reached out um, was that, uh, and I always just like I throw it on the dark. I'm like, I don't know if you guys would be down to just, I, you know, shucks, I found you guys on Instagram and you're like, we're huge fans. I'm like, oh, sweet, they're gamers. <laughs> so <laughs> what, what is, how does that, is one more a gamer or, or are you guys like, what's, what's your situation with that? What's the crossover there? I uh, I've I'm I'm big on PS4 and right Switch. On. I know Brandon just got a Switch. Good man. Uh, Jim Jim's more sports games. Uh, I would say that I'm the least uh, qualified to to talk gaming, but I I, I do enjoy it. <laughs> I do enjoy a good game. Um, perhaps around a game of backgammon after dinner. <laughs> right. Um, what, uh, okay, so what do you guys, A, what have you guys played? Um, how, like, how, how do you, how are you familiar with, I know, I told you how I was familiar with you. So what, what are you guys familiar with me? Uh, and, <laughs> and, and, and more importantly, what are you guys playing now? Ooh, 
See, I've been wanting to talk about this this whole time. I just <laughs> haven't Get it. figured out the way to like bring it into the conversation. Yes, Let's do go. it. Um, I have probably played Bioshock Infinite like six times, I think. Much obliged. Like, very, oh my God. Damn. Uh, I've played all of the Arkham games like three times each. I Damn. just wanted to say that I just am obsessed with your performance as Two-Face and as well as as the Joker in in uh arkham origins because <laughs> i think that like oh my god <laughs> yeah. you pull my <laughs> string i'm gonna i'm gonna be <laughs> <laughs> but, those i mean i've played a lot a lot of games that your voice has been in but those those like two franchises are just ones that i just i'm so obsessed with so i'm it's so cool oh, to be yeah. talking to you no lie oh, i dude. definitely crushed last of us which is one of the fav my favorite things i've ever played and i'm like afraid of everything like i don't even watch scary movies so like playing it was a very energetic experience <laughs> for me. so you definitely helped me through that uh <laughs> and i also like <laughs> i love all the lego games dude so do i, I. Love Lego games, you're. I, Lego games are so fun. Me they're too, so man. Fun. I there's been many a night where and, and the co-op for those things are incredible too. Um, yeah. And and I I go back to when they're just you know. Yeah. Um, I, I I play the special Lego Star Wars. Um, oh yeah. I <laughs> have you played part two yet? Uh, I'm ha I, I'm a third of the way through. Yeah, that's what you think. Because I just started it. Because I just finished. Um, uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Now it's so fun. So now I'm like a third multiplayer, of the bro. Just got to the town. Oh, yeah, there's multiplayer for Ghost of Tsushima. Have you Do you that? know that? There is for we have bro. To I I know, <laughs> man. We did it. We did a talk <laughs> with Daisuke, and because uh, I was like being a you know a, a son of of. Uh, <laughs> Doing Infamous Son with Sucker Punch, of course. I was like, dude, yeah. can I? I want to talk to Dice K because I had so much fun playing uh, Ghost and. Just hearing his his uh, his experience, and that dude actually went to Tsushima and wow. kind of like wandered like Kane. Nice. I was like, I wanted to do that right before we did The Last of Us, and I was like, you know, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go out in the woods. Just I'm just gonna just gonna have a horse. I'm just gonna camp out, just me. And <laughs> fortunately, my my friend Travis goes, oh, cool. Yeah, you're absolutely not gonna do that. Because uh, you're because you're an actor, <laughs> and you're not gonna get killed in the wild by a mountain lion. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I guess so. But Daisuke actually did that, and I was like, oh man, it's so cool. You actually got to do that. Um, but yeah, I I am I'm I've got this great new PC, and and my my poor PS4 is sitting there going, remember me? I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I need to fire it back up, and and we need to we need to get down that ghost. Uh, um, multiplayer because it's it's like co-op so we could like go through and be badass samurai through oh, feudal yeah. japan together it's um it's so beautiful too like i just like i finished it but i just ran around on the horse for like three days after it just like looking at stuff that's my problem <laughs> that's why like red dead when i played red dead i oh, I, yeah. I, I told my wife i was like you need to understand i've been waiting like for years for this game to come out and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna be on a horse and you're gonna ask me what are you doing and i'm like nothing i'm not doing just anything. walking around i'm just walking around <laughs> looking around i might i might fish for a little while i don't know um <laughs> but I, i'm doing that right now with uh I, i'm going for my second platinum on uh shadow of war just because i, I fired it up on steam and they were like it's basically a dollar i was like all right <laughs> so i put it up on my <laughs> okay. pc and i was like god this is so much fun yeah, um great. what you guys also i because I, I do want to touch on this um you guys have uh started doing more like you did your first live show um which is is something that i i realize how much i miss i miss concerts i miss like live music venues so w what brought you to do that what was that like was it are you going to do more what was your experience i mean i will obviously we we would hope to do more but this this was uh just about as good of an experience that we could have ever asked for. Uh, this is um, a venue in suburban Boston, Franklin, Massachusetts, called The yeah. Black Box, that hosted us um, in an outdoor tent, uh, just like a wedding tent, just like a you know, just like you would see at a wedding. Uh, and they they built a stage for us, and then they distanced their audience. And um, all, there were I think there's a mandate that only 50 people could watch the performance. So we had two shows in a night. Uh, two, three weeks ago. Yeah. It's like three Whatever. weeks ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
And it was just like the feeling of remembering what it was like to perform for people again was just mm. absolute magic. I can't even tell you. It was like the first time I felt whole since like <laughs> quarantine. Yeah. Just because like for I know for all of us, just performing live in front of human beings is just like our reason why we do this. You know, it's so much of it is about the give and take for me with the audience. <laughs> Um, and just have, and we've been performing for a wall basically for the past couple months. So to be able to have like an audience and, and have a give and take was just, it was the best weekend of 2020 for me. <laughs> it was super awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's also like we, we never, like we've all performed before in right. front of people and we missed that in general, mm -hmm. but we had never performed As in front group. of people together except for one time we did one song. Um, at Eden oh, Espinosa's show, show yeah, yeah. Um, in like February, yeah. <laughs> but like the, it was like so much going on at once. It was like this is so cool, and like this is so yeah. cool, and like it just felt so good. It was yeah. incredible. Can't How long did you guys play for? Two two one hour shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so a lot of belting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you. Um, you, you say you're performing for a wall and there, there is something that I, cause I just finally started getting back out and, and, um, whenever I do like, I was able to do like pop culture conventions. Like I would go to like, you know, comic cons or whatever. Yeah. Um, I've seen some of those videos. They're so great. I'll there were, man, th those were some really, really cool nights. And some of my most favorite, um, the funny story, there was, there's one in Manchester that they have this beautiful theater and we were able to put together a show there and there was, it was coming off the heels of, we had done this pledge music campaign and, and pledge had folded and we found out that we're not going to get pretty much any of the money that, that um, we had raised. And we still, we had, we had finished the album, but we had to actually get it out to everybody and we're still in the process of doing that. And I was just so discouraged because I had allowed myself to lose sight of what that album was meant to be. And it was just ex an expression of, of my creative side as opposed to, I don't, I don't have to put out an album, you know, but I had gotten so entrenched in the project and, and spent a lot of money on it. And it just, it, it, it had become a, a source of, um, it had become a source of pain. And right at the end of that, it, there was, we were supposed to be able to do this big tour and this, this company just was a fly by night. It was all a pipe dream and it was never going to happen. And like this all came to a head two weeks before this show in Manchester. And I literally packed up all my gear and just threw it in the garage. I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm never going to do this again. <laughs> and I got an email and they were like, hey, just Troy, just a quick question. You know, we've got you all set up here. We want to make sure uh, we're still on for the show in Manchester. And I was like, Fuck. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. And I, I, I even begrudgingly was like even setting my gear up and, and everything. I was just like, I don't know why I'm doing this. Why am I doing this? And I walked out on stage that night and it's packed like 1500 people. Oh my gosh. And it was like the first quarter. And when you, you just, you hear that from the crowd. And I was like, this is why I do it. This yeah. is why I do it. I don't do it because of any other reason, but as uh, Jamie Collins says, when you do it, you do it for the love. And for me, that was like, it was such a great reminder. So when you say we, a lot of times we play for a wall, what, it, what do you think? Like 250,000, I think, views that she used to be mine has or whatever. And a lot of that just comes because not only are you guys insanely talented, but when someone who has a huge, you know, spotlight like the fucking eye of Sauron can just go <laughs> on you guys. You're going to benefit from that. Um, but what do you what do you think now when because when you sent that video off, you're just kind of I, I, I still love that thing for Brennan. It's like that was beautiful. I think that, I think that was it, <laughs> which meant that there were <laughs> other ones. You're like, I think that was the one. Um, what what do you what do you do now? And what did you do then when you, when you fired that off to YouTube? You're like, all right, we'll put this up on the internet. We'll see what happens. What was, what was your thought? I, we, we were just like, we want to sing together and we're having a good time doing it. And like, let's just, we should see if anybody else wants to see this, I guess. 
And then <laughs> that's like how the first video one, happened. The yeah. first, yeah, into the unknown. The first one was just like, I, I Jim was like just starting a TikTok and was like, "Can so I like put this there, on my TikTok?" Throw it up. And they're like, "Yeah, okay, let's see yeah. what happens." I mean, I was just as happy <laughs> just singing with these guys. I didn't really mind if they put it on the internet or not because I initially got to New York City. I graduated in. Uh, December of 2019, I got to the city. I was I had like a, a huge talent crush on these two. Wait, I'd seen... high school or college? Oh no, college, college, not making sure. I, was I also took an extra mm -hmm. semester, so I'm even older uh, than that. Um, but that doesn't really. Brendan's help 40. That's what's that's I'm the biggest. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 40 you know? years old. <laughs> It wouldn't I, surprise me if you're like, oh, and by the way, yeah, he's he's the oldest one by like ten years. <laughs> it's just like you're a vampire, and I'm calling you out. Put a mirror up to your hot. face right now. Let's see. Oh, man. What's your skincare regimen? <laughs> <Right. laughs> We're moving on. <laughs> well, what what is the difference now when you when you guys fire off a video and you you put it up? Uh, do you think about the life that it'll have afterwards? Do you do you concern yourself, or do you still focus on as like we're just three guys that want to sing together? Dude, it's like at this point, people have been so nice to us that like it doesn't matter if they hate it. Like we 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 have just been like we have been given such a gift uh, from the internet already that at this point we're just three guys who like to sing together and and what's interesting about our schedule is we always put a video out on Thursday but by Sunday or Monday we need to know what the next song is and what yeah. the arrangement is right um, so we're on to the next one yeah, so we, yeah. we post it and then we're like all right what do you want to do next week it's gonna kind of basically the yeah. idea um, there's a very little there's very little time to like bask in whatever it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like all right what's what's happening next yeah <laughs> Like Dude. today was like okay, so uh, we just put out uh, what was it called, Joanna, and and now you need to come over so that we can do the the, the uh, podcast the thing, with Troy. Yeah, yeah it's because we're kind of just trying to keep some kind of schedule. I I don't want to. It's it's really hard because I I I want to know what you guys are working on next, but I also. Um, can appreciate. Well, by the time this is out, you probably will, you guys are posting faster than we are. Um, do you? Uh, Look, you sing for me. Um, <laughs> do you have any desire to do original, or do you feel like this is kind of your your thing? I mean, you're, you're what you are doing. By the way, that, that's that's a let me retract that because what you are doing is original. Um, but do you have stuff that you want to music that you want to write that is all original? I think I think one of the benefits of doing a song every week is that we can kind of experiment with with whatever because there's so many and that no matter what somebody's gonna like something okay. um and and me and brendan and and jim has but he's never shared it with us uh right our <laughs> own music um but, wait you haven't uh, shared it with them i'm just no, i I'm, I'm, I'm i'm i just want it to be good and, uh i am waiting, waiting for the right I'm waiting song. for the right moment We'll get there one day. Um, We're trying. Boy, I, will, I, wanna... I will. I will put stuff out eventually, but um, we'll get it. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> these two are both uh, super established singer songwriters and have EPs and singles online. I wouldn't say just... super. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> they're very good. They're very good. Um, but the answer is yes. Yeah. We are. We're, we're, we're waiting, yeah. like me and, and Brendan especially have just had that in the back of our minds when we're writing stuff now to be like, I maybe wonder think if, about like if this one could be for the three of us. For or T3, like, yeah. Right on. Well, that might work for a melody for the three of us. But yeah. And where yeah, did the name come from? Go. <laughs> TikTok, yeah. kind of. Yeah, um, so kind of came from TikTok. We, we, I think it's no secret that in our our first initial successes were on tiktok uh, cool. we were met with open arms on that community when we first started putting up our our covers and there's a um there's a um a user on there named uh santa claus oh, and santa, um, j. Claus. santa, santa j. Claus, j claus the tiktok uh, star is a user on tiktok and he kind of coined the tiktok tenors as um, like our name as right? our kind of like our name uh, he, he wrote it in a comment. I think it was for Moana, or maybe it was for Defying Gravity. Uh, it doesn't matter. It was, like, towards the beginning. And, you know, we kind of, like, 
loved that and embraced that and kind of turned it into a hashtag, but didn't necessarily think that would be like our like official name. You know, we're not affiliated with TikTok in any way. But then it just kind of became like, well, that's how people know us. T three, like you three, know, tenors. three tenors. Three tenors. Um, you can kind of think about it in a, a few ways, I guess. But yeah, yeah. like there's tenor one in choir, there's tenor two in choir, and then we're like, oh, what about tenor three? <laughs> <We're choir?"> <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, and. Where can everybody get one of the, I want one of those shirts. Where can everybody get one of those shirts? Uh, hopefully soon. Uh, we're about to launch a store yes. soon. Okay. Um, probably within the next few weeks, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure by the time that this video is out. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so, yeah if nothing it's... else, like shoot me a, shoot me a link so we can, um, First of all, I want to support you guys and also get everybody else to to get one of those because they're just dope. Um, Thanks so much. I love it. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, I uh, I'm super super um, well established. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm, you are. <laughs> I'm very very grateful. I can't believe. Oh god. That you guys have been incredibly gracious with your time and and kind of brought me into the the process too. I I would say to you Jim just a, a word of encouragement. Um that something that I've learned that I've been fortunate enough to work with the, the partners and the collaborators that I have is that um I can only take my song so far. And what I've I've come to learn is it's not about me getting it good, it's about us getting it great. And um I I try to get those roughs and those sketches and those ideas as quickly as I can to those people that I trust that have proven themselves to be collaborative partners, to be able to go, I hear where you're going. Let me help you get there. Um, so I, I would encourage you get, get that, uh, get those songs yes. out there. Uh, yes. And again, cause damn son, you talented, you talented. Uh, if you can, if you can write a eighth, of as well as you can sing, that I cannot wait to hear the music <laughs> that you guys uh, that you that you're capable of producing. Um, I well, we're gonna put links and descriptions and everything for you guys um, so everyone can can follow along. Uh, but just for people who might just be listening, uh, where's the best place for people to find you? Get it? <laughs> Sorry, we had some some road And now <laughs> they're being invaded. No. <laughs> New York City, man. Uh, yeah, so all of our um, socials, uh, well, most of our socials are T.3 official. Cool. Uh, so that's uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, and then the only other one will be Twitter, where uh, we have an underscore instead of the dot, T underscore 3 official. I guess you can't have a dot on Twitter. And then um, on YouTube, we are Jim Hogan yeah, 220. Everything's on my YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that too, and I was like, when is Jim going to put this up under? Oh, it actually already is. Uh, yeah. um, well, we're going to support you guys in every way that we can. I, I can't thank you enough um, for for taking time to uh, to talk to me. Um, Dude, thank you so honestly, much. Thank you so awesome. much. This has been yeah, so nice. Yeah. Thank you so much. 